um, as promised. A little bit later than we were expecting, but glad we got the Fran Brown. Joined in studio here by Sam Holland, founder and CEO of No Destination. Sam, great to have you on. Uh, great to see you here in studio. How are things? Great. I um, appreciate you guys uh, having me on. I'm excited. Last time we did this, it was... I was on Zoom, so it's cool to be in here to see the actual space. Um, but I'm good. Everything's going well. We just put a studio in on Marshall Street, started releasing some podcasts, and we're just trying to get some Syracuse content out there for the people. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it looks great. Go yeah, ahead, Paul. I was just going to say that I, I saw your stuff, and I was like, Jordan, we need to get them on you yeah. know, and talk about it. And like you've gotten great guests. you know. And, and what can people expect out of your podcast? What I think is different and a little cool is that, um, so I just – Quick background. I started the first NIL agency here with Jack Adler, and then I ran Barstool Syracuse for four years. So I have a lot of relationships with these athletes already. So when we decided to start the show, in terms of getting guests, it was really easy because it was all based off of relationships rather than having to go through kind of maybe the typical channels that a lot of other outlets have to. So what I think has been cool is the conversations have been very personal and have been, I mean, I'm 23 years old. So it's we're having kind of a peer-to-peer conversation, which I think is different from a lot of the interviews that you see. Um, so we're shooting four episodes this week, four more next week, four the week after, um, and we're just trying to get as many interviews out as possible. When I was 23, I was passed out on Marshall Street. <laughs> yeah, right. We're hustling. <laughs> yeah, right. That's one of the things I notice uh, about your work is that it doesn't seem like you're interviewing these guys. It seems like you're just chatting with these guys, and uh, it it does uh, it does lend itself to just kind of a, a conversation between you and the player. What what has stood out to you about uh, some of the interviews you've done to this point? I saw you got Kyle McCord, Dan Valari. Um, what what kind of stood out to you from those interviews? So we've done four of them now. We had Kyle, Dan, Josh Aloha, and Kiko Cruz, and then the episode coming out tonight is with Naheem McLeod, which we did last night. The first three episodes, I had relationships with all of them going into it. Naheem last night was the first time we met when he walked into the studio, and so. We had no idea what to expect in terms of can this guy tell stories? Sure. Is he going to talk? Is he going to give one word answers? And we had a great 30 minute conversation. We cut the show, talked for another hour afterwards. And that was really surprising to me just because I think a lot of athletes um, sometimes have trouble having conversations and the whole media train side of it, not wanting to, to say things that they're not supposed to say. Every guest we've had on, we've had good conversations with, which I think has just been, it's giving us validation that what we're doing is showing a different side of these athletes. We always talk about showing the person behind the player. Um, And I think so far we've done a good job. The one thing I will say is this is my first time ever hosting a show before. So like we're learning everything on the fly very quickly. Same. Yeah. We got our studio up in four weeks and like I had never done anything like that before. So that was a journey in itself. But it's been a really cool experience so far. You had Naheem McLeod on. Did it come up like... Hey, they just got a guy that's probably gonna take minutes from you uh, out of the portal. And you know, how did yeah? How does that? Uh, how does he react to something like that? You'll have to watch the episode to find out. <laughs> what I will say though, Eddie and Nahim are friends. I think honestly, obviously, there's the minute side of it, but they complement each other in a sense because Eddie's Eddie's a big boy. He'll be on the court. He'll, I imagine, the way I see this offense is a lot of it's going to be running through him. He's a very very good passer. When he comes out, you can bring Naheem in, who's just going to be a rim presence. And I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic. But I think what what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is that this team's coming together and they haven't even started practicing yet. But a lot of these guys have relationships already, are talking, and I think the chemistry is already starting to build, which is really exciting. Everybody's waiting on uh, the guard. Who's the guard going to be that they get out of the portal? We've been hearing a lot about Dakota LaFue, and obviously his, you know, his his former head coach is uh, is coming here to be an assistant. Uh, a lot of people thought that that would lead to Dakota LaFue committing here. He was just at Villanova. What what do you think is going to happen with the guard position? Do you think it's Dakota LaFue? Do you think it's somebody else? I think that Dakota is probably the most likely option. Yeah. That being said, I know Villanova, as everyone's seen on Twitter, is making a really, really hard push. Um, obviously, the two programs are in kind of different positions. They're depleted. One of their guards just entered the portal, which I think does not bode super well for him coming here. But at the end of the day, like I think what Syracuse is starting to build is special, and we need a guard. So I'm hoping it's Dakota. I know there's a couple other guys um, that they're looking at, but I think that's kind of the number one priority as of right now. You know, I know you, you mentioned your background uh, with it, with NIL and whatnot, and your understanding of NIL. Um, is it good for college sports? Or I guess it doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's here to stay. But, I mean, what, what are your, your thoughts on, you know, free agency every year? Um, what I think's messed up is the, 
the contracts around everything because it's one of the only areas where you have contracts where the terms don't matter as much and players are able to exit and they might not have conditions that hold them down. So I think NIL is going to change 100%. It has to for a lot of different reasons. Um, at the same same time, it's needed. Like this step is needed sure. in that process to kind of start to establish what this new era of college sports looks like. So I don't necessarily think it's great. This is definitely not the long-term solution, but it's the necessary starting point to just get the ball rolling. Paulie brought up earlier in the show, he said, do you think we're going to get to a point where, you know, the universities are more in control of NIL and then you start seeing guys, all right, if you want this NIL deal, it's a three-year contract, or, you know, like we do in the pros, right? You know, we don't see NBA players become unrestricted free agents every year. They've got, They've got long-term contracts. Do you think we'll start seeing something like that in college where guys are signing, you know, two- or three-year deals? I think we have to, and I even saw something the other day about how there's going to be a number of guys that enter the portal soon, and the reason they haven't yet is because they're collecting their last NIL checks from that school they're at now. So, like, that, in a sense, is a problem in itself, and I think the solution to that is either school bringing it in-house to a degree um, or some other type of structure. That's what Charlie Baker needs to start to figure <laughs> right. out. Yeah, and the other thing is, uh, you see a guy like Jeremy Roach. Was that what was holding him up on on a thing like that? And you, by you the think, way, I would love him. Well, that, well, that, that's what I was just going to ask you. Do you think it's more important to get a guy who's a fifth year that's played at the Power Five than it is to get a guy who's been at like Mount St. Mary's, for example? I think the biggest piece of all of this is it comes down to the players' priorities and what they want. Because, like, let's not beat around the bush here. This is a big money game for the most most of the athletes. So. For a lot of these guys, it just weighs into like, what do you want? Do you want to go win? Do you want to go make money? What, where are your priorities at? And I think that's what we're starting to see just across the country in terms of where guys are going and what they're making their decisions on. So to answer your question, I think what you want is someone that wants to win. You don't want someone that's just chasing the money. Um, that being said, I don't know where everyone's priorities lay, and I'm hoping that whoever we end up getting wants to come here and, and build something. You mentioned Kyle McCord, and we were just also discussing the fact that there's a generation of football fans in this town that don't know what it was like to be a consistent winner, and you're probably one of them. I'm one of them, yeah. you know, and, and we haven't had a quarterback where we were confident that he was going to be good going into the season since Donovan McNabb, which is crazy. You know, What, what did you take away from your interview with him? Kyle's very professional, and we've hung out a couple of times since outside of the podcast. And he, I'm just really excited for him. The Ohio State fan base is just awful. Like we, all of our videos we post, we get a lot of Ohio State people commenting, and the feedback is always what you'd expect it to be. He got Joe Girard in his, I would, I would say. Yeah, that's a good comparison. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just excited for him to to perform, and what. I think the best part of this upcoming football season is all the weapons he has around them. Like, I've heard a lot of good stuff about Zed Haynes and Jackson Meeks from Georgia. Obviously, you have Aranda and Dan LaQuint. Like, the offense is is packed. So is the defense. And if we win this year, a lot of guys are going to get a shot at the next level. And I think that's what's getting people to buy in is the idea that if the team wins, there's going to be individual success as well. It was crazy to hear Coach Brown. I said, what's one name that people wouldn't expect? To, you know, you got to come see this guy. And he says, Trevor Pena, you know. There's uh, another one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You forgot all about him with all the names. He's fast as lightning. Yeah. Know? And you forgot about him because he was hurt all yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, you know, you said if they win, what is realistic in your mind for next year? Are you asking what my expectations are? Yeah. Top three ACC. Really? Wow. Yeah. Expectations. Yeah. I mean, look at the schedule. What games are we losing? See, this is where me, a guy who's been alive a long time, knows like you're still, it, like, I, I just can't fathom that they could be a top three team right away well we did it based on the vegas odds yeah but you also, and they only play three teams that are ahead of them in the vegas odds so, if it, 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 so that would be is, nine and, that I'll would be nine you. and three if the schedule had fallen like it normally does where it's four te- if you got ohio holy cross you know like that to come out with georgia tech second he doesn't game, like the georgia tech game week two he doesn't yeah i i don't and we'll see you know i hope you're right you know does, does the way the schedule break out where are you at all? You know, I just look at it. We don't have Clemson. We don't have Florida State. We don't have UNC. We have a lot of other games, and it's easy to get tripped up. The biggest question mark in my head is that Fran's a great recruiter. He hasn't been the head coach yet. If Fran can coach, I don't know who's calling plays. I don't know what all that looks like. If they can coach, like I think top three in the ACC is a is a realistic expectation. I'll take that. At NC State, um, 
I mean, and home for Miami. Are those the two toughest games on the schedule? Yeah. yeah. You know? So, I I mean, you make a good point. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I think this team is going to win more than they lose. Um, and I also feel like football is much different than basketball, where if you get one good guy, you can win a couple games. This Football takes everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But that's right. what excites me about it, is that if they have a great season, there are eight or nine guys that could get a chance at the next level. Yeah, sure. But in order for that to happen, we have to win. And that that's what it sounds like they're buying in around. How can people find your stuff? We're everywhere. On Instagram, it's No Destination Media. On Twitter, it's No Underscore Destination with two N's at the end. On TikTok, we're at Journey is Everything. And then on YouTube, it's No Destination Media. What is the uh, last question for me? What is the, the ultimate goal with this? Like, what is the vision? We're trying to give a platform for the players here to build themselves into the community. That's the big thing um, from the athletic side. Our company... We do digital marketing for businesses around here. So we do a lot of stuff with the athletes, a lot of stuff with businesses. Our goal is to kind of combine the two of them in the future. Um, and what I really like about this is it gives, it allows me, I, I love business, I love sports, and it allows me to kind of combine the two of them. Do you see this becoming a network for you or your other schools? Maybe, we'll see. I see, a- I see that. I also see like my... I, I'm a marketing guy. Like, I would love to run an agency. So there's a way that that scales out of Syracuse. There's also a way where we set up satellite shops on different schools. I went to uh, nine different college campuses in the fall, traveling around. That's actually where I met Eddie Lampkin in Boulder for the first time. And this need of content creation around sports departments is, one, something that I think will eventually be done in-house. Eventually, all the schools will do it. Right now, they don't have the infrastructure and they don't have the resources. So I think there's a major opportunity to create content around the players off the field. And I'm hoping that we can do that in Syracuse over the next year and then potentially scale it out. Wow. I, I love the vision. Um, you're, you're a really uh, intelligent young man. We appreciate you coming on. You seem very connected. Uh, anytime you want to come on, let us know. We, we'd love to help uh, spread the word and help you out any way we can. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. How All can right. you never call me intelligent, Steve? Because you're not. I mean, you, you are every once in a while. We, we see glimpses of it, <laughs> just not on a regular basis. Sam Holland uh, joining us here. Well, that's at the, the worst song bracket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that's proof to my point. Back after this on ESPN Radio.